why do you need a holiday to you you, you pot around you, it, your, your big your big day last week was going to the cobblers so why do you need a break so much this oh, week it's, it's just that you know it's it's good for your brain and that isn't it it's, it's it opens well, it up a bit you are not evidence for that where did you go Grand canary for a week yeah just sitting around um, well, there isn't much else to do at Gran Canaria. I mean, I don't want to go slagging a place off because every time I seem to talk about somewhere, get into trouble for it. Right. But it's just a, like a big rock. It's yeah. just vol volcanic, isn't it? It's and just... you must have looked like a, a little barnacle on that. Have you been there before? Um, been, been near it before to another rock, which was just well, what, the same sort of thing. Been? Why did you go back? Because you think, well, they can't have loads of these islands that are the same, like just a big rock with hotels on, they can't get away with it. So you <laughs> think, well, they well, obviously the next are one. getting away with it. But why, why do you keep going to these places that are rocks? Why don't you investigate first? Ask your travel agent, is this a giant rock? Because, because that's what you do, innit? You go and find out yourself. I mean, <laughs> when, when Armstrong went to the moon, what was he expecting up there? That's a fact that it's a big rock, and he still went all that way. <laughs> I don't so, know what so, that point was. No, so what, so what I'm saying is, though... What do you make of this place? you enjoy it, Grand Canaria? It was I just a big rock, but did you... you were, I bet you... the moon was better. Really? <laughs> what did you do? It was just, uh... Well, um, it was big hotel, like, big, massive places where there's loads of people, and, you know, you go for your dinner. That describes a hotel. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Me. You've nailed that. But well, I've been to a few, that sounds like it. No, but... <laughs> I thought, so there is stuff going on that I can chat about. Start a diary. Sure. You started a diary? Yeah. And what are you gonna do? You, did you, did you keep it up every day? Yeah, just, uh... Oh, can I read it, please? Well, a diary's meant to be sort can, of... Uh, please, can I read some out on this podcast? I... Carl! Some of it, though, is only relevant to me, it's sort of... Oh, running... this is... Please, give me it. Oh, my God. I mean, this isn't... I haven't just... Look how big it is! <laughs> <laughs> it's oh one of those God. desk diaries. It's huge. It's about a foot long, and it's... Ma Oh, that is amazing. Imagine if Anne Franks had been like that. As she got out, <laughs> right, uh, everyone would have heard it clank down on the desk. Yeah, but my writing's quite big, isn't it? Oh, look, give oh, us that. Do you, give know, us that. do you know about joined up writing? Have you this heard about is that? No amazing. Point. Sometimes you can't read it, can you? So it's right, best to okay. look at, oh, look at Asian Oh, look, times. oh my God, it starts on the first day. This is, this is wonderful. Going on holiday to Gran Canaria today, woke up to the news that Tony Banks had died. There was a piece of on the news about how everyone was shocked. Got me thinking about an invention that was be good. Right, a, a watch that counted down your life. If it says you've got three days left, <laughs> go to the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> Told Suzanne about invention. She said she wouldn't buy one, but she said that about the iPod. How uh, and how would this device work? This watch. I mean, how would you uh, how would you know when you were about to die? Have you, is that a concern? Again, not for you to worry about, presumably the boffins. And no, sort of all I was thinking is that Tony Banks fella, you know, he died and everyone was shocked about it. But if you had like a little watch on... But how does it work? You can't just say, wouldn't it be good? How how would this work? Yeah, um, I imagine you in the patent office going, got an idea. They go, oh, certainly, yeah, Mr. Bogdan, what's your idea? Watch, they're counting down your life. Oh, how does that work? What? Just, just well, wear it, just pop it on your wrist. No, 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 what do you mean, just pop it on your wrist? How does it work, just pop it on your wrist? Brilliant. You're an idiot. Well, it's interesting that he goes on. The flight to Gran Canaria was a bit bumpy. I thought about the clock that counts down your life again, and I wondered if it would know if you were going to die in a disaster. <laughs> uh, now, <laughs> he's querying his own, his own design. He's wondering yeah. if he would know. He's invented this. He's and invented, <laughs> now he's not even shot. <laughs> this is a brilliant enough. diary. This might be the best diary ever written. Oh. While sat listening to the kinks on my iPod, I wondered if everybody thinks in their accent. I know I do. What's, what's this? What are you talking about? Just, just that, uh, you know, when I, when I've been sat there lying on the lounger, right? <laughs> and I was thinking about stuff. How do you know you think in your accent? Tell me a typical thought. Because, because what I mean is, say, say if I was like, if I saw something, right? Do you know how I say, like, oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? That, no, but that was I don't have said. to. But in uh, when you think, I don't think the sentence is like I'm saying it. It's just a thought. The thought appears. It's conceptual and it's already there. It's not like um, I go, Rick, just uh, looking at a fellow over there, were you? Yeah, I was. Yeah, um, I was thinking it looks a bit weird. Oh, so was I. I don't. I don't think out whole sentences. Whereas you have Carl. Carl, Carl, stop listening to the kinks for a minute. Look over there. More, more cross-eyed people. <laughs> no, well that's yeah. That's is that how your of... mind works? 
In a way, yeah. And Brilliant. that's when, it, because, because I thought... <laughs> that explains a lot. <laughs> it's great that he has to think of that whole sentence. Because I thought, that's weird, isn't it? Like, I didn't think, that's weird, isn't it? And I no. thought, I actually think in my accent. And then I thought, does Stephen Hawking, does he, when he's doing his maths and that, hmm. is he, I don't know where he's from, so I don't know what his accent would be like. I think he's from, uh Kent or Cambridge or Oxford right. or something. So, so you think he might think in his... In, in his, his voice, in that, yeah. in that voice. In computerised voice. Just wondered. Had lunch inside today due to shite weather. Sat next to an old fella. Old men's ears and noses carry on growing as they get older. Suzanne noticed his fingers were fat too. Maybe they continue to grow. Suzanne didn't laugh when I said her arse had the same problem. <laughs> <laughs> Day three, cloudy... Did you have a nickname? Um, <laughs> not, not really. I mean, there was a lot of people on the estate that I grew up on. You know, nicknames are, are big things on estates and that. Yeah. Um, a lot of my dad's mates, right? What, what their nicknames did was tell you about them. Do you know how I said about the Elephant Man's a good name? Yeah. Because, like, you know what you're going to get. If someone said, Elephant Man's popping around in a bit, <laughs> it wouldn't be a shock <laughs> when he walked in. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, so it, was, it worked in that sort of, uh, Sort of thing, you know. So there was, uh, there was John the Screw, right? John the Screw. Yeah. Well, he had sex a lot, or he worked in a prison. No, he had a DIY shop. <laughs> 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 so, so you had him, right? right? There was, uh, <laughs> there was Fred the Veg. Yeah. Which is, yeah, I assume right. it's because he was at the same IQ as you, yeah. or, or or he was in a coma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. There was, there was, uh, there was my uncle Tattoo Stan. Oh, right. right. Yeah. He had, he had, like, loads of tattoos that he'd just done himself. Oh, my right. God. The, the problem <laughs> was, because he did his tattoos himself, <sighs> the ones on his left arm were really good. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was right-handed. On his right arm, rubbish. Right? <laughs> um, so, so there was him. Ah, great. And there was, um, Jimmy the Hat. Jimmy who, the Hat? Yeah. Did and he that, always wear a hat? No, he didn't. That, that's, that was the point there. That he, he never wore a hat. That's amazing. Brilliant. How can you pick up on someone never wearing a hat? How would you ever notice? I'll tell you what, I've noticed something about Jimmy. What? Go on. He doesn't wear a hat. <laughs> why, why was he not called Jimmy the Parrot? Because he, he never carries a parrot. <laughs> no, yeah, well, no, no, that's just the way, I mean, that's how they work, isn't it? I mean, here, that, that, here comes Jimmy Three Legs. Why'd you call him that? He hasn't got three legs. I didn't really have one apart from, um, like, I had a CB. You know, like, when you'd go on a CB radio and have a chat to people. Oh, this was a craze. In the, uh, was it late 70s, early 80s? Sort of early 80s. And, uh, it was just short band radio, wasn't it? Everyone had these little handsets and they'd speak to each other in the sort of local area. Yeah, it was mainly, I think it started off with like Lorry drivers, isn't it? Yeah, truckers, yeah, because there was that, that thing from like about 1970. Convoy. Was convoy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so I had one of them and the handle, I had, I had two handle different Handle means your nickname, your yeah, name. Yeah, there's loads of code, code stuff. Yeah. Um, I had, I had a couple. I had, um, there was Pilky 01, because right. like I say, there's a lot of Pilkingtons and that in Manchester, so if someone wants Pilky 02, it's open. Do you know what I mean? They can have it. And then, um... <laughs> that is, that is people scrabbling for, oh, I, want yeah. Pil <laughs> I want a Pilky 01. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, because I did boxing and that. Well, you did it once. <laughs> yeah. I'd, uh, I'd Boxer Boy. Because I thought that that's quite a good image as well. That's kind of like people going, oh, don't mess with him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If he asks what your handle is, tell him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's boxer boy in that. Yeah. So, just had them two, and I used to just go on there and... Pointless. What is the point of this? Well, you just, you just meet people, don't you? And you so don't meet people. You say, what's your handle? You're a boxer boy. What's yours? Uh, uh, rubber duck. All right, cheers. No, but then, but then you'll say, like, then you go, oh, uh, what's your 20? What's that mean? That's, where are you? Well, why don't you say, where are you? Because just in case there's someone who's listening in who, who you know, you hear about this all the time, don't you? People listening, jotting stuff down. Oh, right. So just in case someone in the world doesn't know what handle means, they're, they're out of the loop. They're yeah. out of the loop. It's hardly the, it's not a difficult code to crack, is it, yeah. if you're trying to track someone? It's hardly the head of the mafia talking to each other because the FBI are on the wire. It's ridiculous. Like, I go, oh, you keep saying that, what's your handle? And they come back with something else. I, <laughs> I can't work out what's going on. No, it's like, it's like anything, isn't it? That's what codes, that's what, you know, that's what codes are all about, isn't it? You set them up and that. Go on, and tell me, tell me the code, then. Reveal it long last to the world, what yeah. these codes are. Right, so, yeah. what's your 20? Where oh, are you? This is better than the Enigma. Yeah. Right, now, here we go. Right. How many candles are you burning? 
does that mean how big's your car or something like that? Horsepower or something? See? No, that's, that's how oh, old Oh, what are you? time is it? No, how old are you? What, how old are you? Okay. Right. right. Uh, how many candles are you burning, of course? Yeah. So what the, what's the answer come back? You go, uh... I'm 15. 14. Brilliant. That code, <laughs> that code, it, there's no one gonna work that out. I wish you'd have kept a diary of this, cos this has been fascinating. <laughs> now and again, someone will come in and go, uh, side on, right? What's that mean? And that means, like, there's someone sat there listening into Ooh. this chat and going, this sounds interesting. Yeah, no, it does Unlikely, it. yeah. And they, they want to join in, so they sort of go, side on, you go, side on, bring it in, right? And they go, <laughs> alright. How many candles are you burning? <laughs> yeah. What's your that, 20? That's the clue's burning again. Yeah. <laughs> See you later, what's your 20? How many <laughs> yeah. candles are you burning? Oh. And, I mean, it seems to me that what you should have done is make, made a note the first time, so that when you then speak to them again, you don't need to ask them those questions. <laughs> Can I just confirm that you're burning 15? Right, this is uh, extracts from Carl's diary. Did podcast and went for an Italian with Ricky and Steve. Italian place is good. We've been there a few times. I always have the same thing, spaghetti. Can't remember what everyone else had. Last time we went there, Steve had little octopuses with pasta. You could see that they were octopuses. They hadn't been cut up or anything. My rule is that I only eat stuff that looks nice when it's alive. <laughs> <laughs> a cow, a chicken, some fish. An octopus is an odd-looking thing alive. Even worse when it's dead and limp. It looks like it just shouldn't have been sat in the spaghetti. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. <laughs> Ricky drew another picture of my head. We've given a few of them away as prizes, but he draws so many of them that they won't be worth as much anymore. <laughs> Everyone will eventually have one. Like those pictures of a boy crying that caused houses to burn down in the 1980s. What does that mean? What are you talking about? It's just some kid. Uh, my auntie Nora had one, and it was just like a kid with like a blue jumper on and he's, it's like a painting, not a photo. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And he's just crying. Like a chocolate box, it's really awful sort of sugary. And sort what of. happened is it, they found out that a load of houses were being set on fire or burst into flames, whatever. And the weird thing was... Oh, it's bollocks. Every house that burnt down had that photo. Yeah, because every house had that picture of in the <laughs> fucking 70s and 80s. <laughs> Idiot. It's like, we're linking it to sinks. Every house that's ever burnt down had a sink. <laughs> You're talking shit mm. again. Mm. Carry on. This is from Anne-Marie. She says that she loves the podcast. She listens with her seven months old baby. Um, that cannot be a good idea. And she says this to you, Carl. If you had children, what is the most important lesson you'd want to teach them? Uh, I mean, in a way, if you sort of look after a kid too much, it doesn't learn that much. But if you let it learn by its mistakes, it'll probably grow up all right. But there are it's some like, mistakes you can't afford it to make to learn from. Yeah. Driving a car ro the wrong way down a motorway. Um, test testing if the fire really is hot. No, but say like the time... Does, does broken glass really taste horrible? These are lessons you don't want it to learn from mistakes. Yeah, you can tell them that. But, yeah, but, what, I mean is, but what I mean is, there's, there's certain things that... I, I just think there was a kid who grew up in our, in our avenue, right, on the estate, who, when it was born, right, we kind of thought, it's got no chance, this kid, because its man was, was a bit of a rumman. Um, you know, a rumman? The, Where, where's that? No, just, just like, you know, she like going out and having a fag and like having a drink and she's never at home. It's the one who had the, the horse in the house. Sure. Right? Which I don't want to go over. <laughs> sure. It's old news. It's yeah. out there, isn't it? If you want to find out about the horse in the house. <laughs> but, uh, she had a kid and everyone was pretty surprised when they saw it because it was a good looking kid. Mm. She was surprised because like, you know, the man wasn't that good looking, the dad was a bit rough. But mm. it, it came out. And she was showing it around, around the avenue, going, look at this, I've had. And <laughs> she, was, she was chuffed with it, because it's probably, like, one of the newest things she's ever had, because everything else was always sort of... Second hand. Second hand and what yeah. have you, but suddenly she's got this brand new little baby, right? Anyway, as it grew up, right, those looks went... <laughs> right. And I'm not talking getting old, I'm talking by the age of about three. <laughs> <laughs> it looked... It looked rough already, right? And... All that, that just happened because that's, that's the life it was in, right? Yeah. So, like, it, it used to, it had, like, a patchy head. Um, it's a... It, it what? It had a patchy head? A patchy head, it's just sort of... Uh, sort it wasn't, of it, it, it wasn't a North American Indian, what do you mean, a uh, patchy head? Just, just his hair was patchy, he used to chase, sort of, 
cars and stuff. <laughs> it's cars, <laughs> sorry! <laughs> what's the, what do you mean? It just, that's what he did for his... The, sorry, the, did she let it get raised by wolves? <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but all I'm saying is that, at the end of the day, <clears throat> what is it that makes a person? Do you know what I mean? Now, I don't know what state he's in now, but maybe he learned all his mistakes by the age of four. I'm guessing he's not chasing cars now, but at least he's done it. I'm guessing he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? At least he can go, yeah, I've been there, done that, and you don't go back to it. And you can get away with doing dafter things when you're a kid, can't you? I nearly killed a man once, right? <laughs> okay, right. Did well, you? that time when I was in, in <laughs> Wales, and I was having a walk with my dad on the cliffs and that, yeah. and I just picked up a big rock, right? chucked it off the edge, and as I chucked it off the edge, I noticed a fellow was walking down below. Jeez. And I missed his head by, like, inches. Now, I've never chucked a rock off a bridge or, like, off a cliff or anything. And right? it only took one man to almost lose his life for you to learn that lesson. Yeah, but that's how you learn your lessons, yeah. isn't it? See, a lot of people would have said that maybe your dad should have said, Hey, Carl, what are you doing? No, but he didn't know I was doing it. I didn't say I'm gonna chuck this off here. I just picked it up and chucked it. And, like, as I let go of it, I noticed a fellow was down there. You live and you learn. That's a little <laughs> mantra. Right? All right. Okay. You live and you learn. So the woman who's had the kid, sort of look after it, feed it, <laughs> make sure it's got shoes and that, <laughs> but let it go <laughs> about. That's great. There's the advice for you, Emery. I love that. Good luck. Just let your seven-month-old baby roam about. It was just all sort of Chinese proverbs and that. One of my favourite on the same subject is. Um, a camel is a horse designed by committee. What do you mean? Well, it, I mean, it's having a go at the camel and it shouldn't, but, but it's just, you know, it's just it's just a metaphor. And if you wanted to design a horse and you had that vision, but you let, you let 12 people in a room have their say, it wouldn't come out as you wanted it to do and it wouldn't be as good. A vision is more perfect than committee because everyone having their say, it becomes anodyne, it becomes compromised. Whereas the best things you can do is have an idea and have a vision and auteur that. Rick, can I just say now, I can tell from his look that he's thinking, which committee designed the camel? <laughs> well, I'd just say, I'd say, who, why would you request the ump bit? Because <laughs> that's just going to get in the way, isn't it? This is, I mean, I've always, I've always said that about a lot of animals. It's like we, we've doubled up on a lot of them. We've chatted about elephants and mammoths, one or the other. <laughs> and that's the same with a, with a camel. I'd have that up there as what what they're doing. They were good years ago in the Jesus times and that. Don't need them now. You know what I mean? We've moved on. <laughs> well, not people who use camels to cross deserts. What other, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna throw some animals at you, and you tell how, how, how you'd have improved them if you'd have been designing them. Okay. Mm -hmm. The octopus. So I, I can now go back, I can look at them and go, what are they doing? And wh wh where have they gone wrong? What's up with you? Wh wh how could you improve it? Like the camel, you'd go lose the app. I'd probably, I'd probably give it a bit more of a body. <laughs> Cut down on the arms. Um, and, and give it some bones. Because I don't understand all this. It getting in a jar is, is good. When does it want to get in a jar? It says... Well, it only wants to get in a jar according to your stories. <laughs> no, but there's something that says it can get in a jar because it hasn't got any bones, but it... I don't know why it'd want to do that in the first place. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> I can't even begin to answer that. Once again, you've, you've said... You've claimed that you've read that they like to get in jars. I mean, how do they know that octopus like to get in jars? <laughs> oh, God, I love it. You can improve on an octopus. Millions and millions of years of evolution, making it perfect for its surroundings. Okay, another animal for you then, Carl. Um, uh, giraffe? Um, what what are they adding to to the world? What are they doing? Well, it's not about what they add to the world. No, but, is I, thought, it? but... I thought that's what everything's about. It's about things are here for a reason. A lot. The, the, of... the reason they're here is because they didn't die. That's it. No, but there seem to be a lot of animals that are like. Do you it's... think there's a lot of cheating? Is that what you're saying? Well, there's I'm a just lot saying of doubling there just seems up. to be a lot of doubling up. Yeah. So and you want you want you you do, you get it down to like eight animals that represented. All of it. So oh, you, okay, who would get in your in your team? You can choose no, eight well, this animals. Is, this is what I'm saying. If I was Noah, mm. I would have gone like, hang on a minute. We'd, I've just seen something that looks a bit like this. <laughs> <laughs> Let it drown <laughs> and have a clear out. <laughs> but he didn't. He was messing about saving everything. He was instructed by God to save everything, yeah. compared to him. Yeah, but if he's been given that job, for me, he's sort of manager of that job. So you, so you believe 
with Noah Molly, as well. Right? You well, believe you believe Noah happened as well, and he built a boat big enough to to cage two of every species. You actually believe that as fact, dear? Well, it's it's out there in book form. Brilliant. Um, right. We haven't answered the question that we started with. How did you meet Suzanne? Does that work? Thanks. Travel. People are fascinated about your approach to time travel. And I know we've talked about this in the past, but um, this is a very specific time travel question. If you had a time machine, Carl, to what event in your childhood would you travel back to and why? What's the point in going back to oh, things that you thought? Yeah. No, it's just that it's never as good as it. It's like a place you go on holiday. And you go back thinking it'll be as good as the first time. It never is. So I don't, I don't believe in... Going back to places. What do, what, what do you understand the question as? Uh, do, do, you, do you think they're asking, would you go back like a ghost and spy? Would you go back and you've got um, your childhood back? You are that child again. You're in the body. You are the child. Or you've got your adult um, head and experiences. Well, on, you know, you, you Rick, can... I really don't think Carl was thinking there was any of those variations. <laughs> no, let's be honest. But now that you've flagged I them up... I think he was thinking of him as he is now in school with a cap on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but Too big for the chairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on. No, I, I don't think I'd... I would go back. It's all happened now, hasn't it? Yeah, but it's a, an email for our own amusement. Well, okay, well... Let's... Choose an event. Okay, forget the time travel thing. Well, no, hang on. I think let's clarify one of Ricky's points. What if you could go back and you could live that moment again? How would you do it differently? There's, there's been times where I've gone, oh, that was a bit out of order or whatever. But then you learn from your mistakes, don't you? So I don't want to go back and change stuff because it's, it's like that thing that they go on about, innit, where they blame the butterfly on an earthquake. You know, it's going to happen. If it wasn't that butterfly, it's another one. So why, why pass the book? Is what yeah. I'm saying. So you've got no regrets. There's so nothing in your past you'd want to change or what, do differently. What What about if you went back and you spied like a ghost on something? You couldn't change anything, but you could you could have a look at someone and just sort of look like uh, you like know, what? like Ebenezer Scrooge does with the Ghost of Christmas Past. He goes back and he's sort of like looking at himself dancing and stuff. What would you do? What would you go back and have a look at? Yeah, but uh, you're oh. asking me to change. I don't want to change. He has, you're, you're not, not changing. You're just changing observing. It's impossible. All right, I tell this you what. question. It, this is. Yeah. It's not going to happen. You're not going to have to. It's impossible. Right. Yeah, I nearly died once, didn't I? On a uh, on an ice pop. Right. Right. Now, maybe if I would have died, I'd say, "Well, let's go back to that," and I won't have an ice pop. You wouldn't be doing the podcast if you'd have died. You wouldn't be uh, having this email put to you. What are you? That's absurd. About? You're now saying you're rewriting history and then going back to change it. Yeah. There's no need. You, you didn't, didn't die. die. <coughs> and we've changed it. You can't change anything. You're just going to go back and watch them. Would you like to go back and watch yourself choking on a Mr. Freeze? No, that's what I'm saying. That's why I wouldn't go back now, because I'm all right. I haven't had one since. I've learned a lesson. I'm not missing them ice pops. So... <laughs> I don't think you're making the most of this opportunity to fantasise. I don't see the point in going back in anything. I mean, do you mean go back in time to the oh. point of you can see, like, Rome in its working day? What, in your childhood? Was Rome about when in your childhood? Were there gladiators well, in your childhood? Well, that's what I'm saying. Everything I've, I've been through, I've been through, so why see it again? Forget it. It was just a nice little question. I mean, that shows the, the lack of imagination right. in Carl right. Pilkington. Can, can your I, mind can't fathom right, something unless it's, like, you know, got two heads. But I don't see the point in doing something twice. Because the thing is, say if there's one good moment when I was about six that I loved, mm. I'd then have to go through all the other 20 years. Again. Well, why? Why have you imposed that? It's a <laughs> fantasy. Make it up. You could go back and come back again. Yeah, whiz back and fast forward 35 years. Nah. Brilliant. No. Like it was on offer. <laughs> like this was really on offer. Move on. It's Carl Pilkerton's diary. Oh, he's written it down! Yeah. <laughs> Was that the jingle, or were you just, well, yeah, just sure. annoyed about sure. something? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> Went and did the podcast. We had a meeting after. I don't like meetings, as I can't keep focused on what people are talking about. I think Ricky has the same problem as after 25 minutes he was trying to wrestle me. <laughs> I tried to do what spiders do and stayed still as if I was dead. But Ricky <laughs> just stayed on top of me, not moving. A bit like when you see one of them big snakes swallowing a sheep. Ricky got bored and released me. I went home thinking, why had I left my old job for this? A homeless man asked me for some money, but I didn't feel like I should treat him as I felt that he probably had a better day than me. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Suzanne called me to say she'd gone for a haircut and that she'd meet me in the supermarket. 
I went to the supermarket, but she wasn't there. I called her and she said she was near the fruit aisle. I went to the fruit aisle and she wasn't there. Turns out she was in a different supermarket <laughs> on the other side of town. And that if I'd listened to her properly, I'd have known that. I didn't want to say that I... Well, you just went to the first supermarket you thought of, as opposed to listening to what supermarket... I'm in the supermarket, all right, bye. I didn't want to say that I hadn't heard her properly, because my ears were ringing a bit from the wrestling from earlier. <laughs> 25 minutes later, I met up with Suzanne. Her haircut wasn't that bad. Normally, her haircuts are followed by an argument between us, as she pays over the odds for some daft haircut that's the latest style. Brilliant. I wish she'd take a picture out of a magazine or ask for a style, rather than letting the hairdresser do what she wants. I said I only tell her to do this as she's got a square head and a close cut <laughs> hairdo makes it look squarer. She said, what do you think of this cut? I said it looked alright as I couldn't be bothered arguing about it. It's weird writing a diary. I don't know who thought of doing one of these first. The last time I did one was at school. They used to get you to do it so they could keep an eye on whatever you were up to. My diary used to say the same thing every night. Got home, went to the shop to get potatoes, bread, milk. Went home, watched telly, went to bed. I think I might have gone to Twiggy's Dance Club, just so I had something different to write. You've not told us about Twiggy's Dance Club. It's just, uh, you know, I, I sort of, when I was a kid, I sort of gave ev everything a bit of a go. I did boxing and that, didn't I? D gave that a go. Um, <laughs> about 45 minutes. And, uh, yeah, a mate, a mate sort of said, oh, you know, you're into your dancing, your robotics and that. You're doing, <laughs> doing your body popping, right? Body popping and that. He said, uh, you ought to come to Twiggy's. And, um, I went there, um, but I didn't go in, it was shut. It was, <laughs> it was they, they were just having like loads of toilet rolls delivered. I think like, <laughs> they, they were like using it as a storage place for toilet rolls and that. So I said, oh, I've come to have a dance. And like, oh, not tonight, come back tomorrow. <laughs> I, I never went back. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, oh, what, a waste, what a waste of an anecdote. <laughs> right. <laughs> Brilliant. Just mean like, Say, say, if, you know, they're running out of ideas for TV programmes and that, right? They get someone who isn't well. They go, look, do you mind if we make a programme on you? And what they do, they sit them in the bed and they go, right, what we're going to do now is take out the heart but replace it with a pacemaker. Right, no, go no, on. no, 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 no. Sorry, people with pacemakers don't have their heart taken out and a pacemaker popped in. All right, then. Um, some sort of machine. What, what I'm getting to is... Have you been playing Operation? What I mean is... <laughs> What I mean is, the big finale would just be a head chatting with loads of wires going into it, and it's like, look what we can do with science. With <laughs> That's what the program's called. It ends the same every week. The volunteer is just a head with loads of wires going out. Look of what it. we can do with science. And he's going, goodbye. Oh, I feel Ill. Got some post delivered to me today. It was. <laughs> oh, this is. This great. makes it in the diary. Got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed. <laughs> To Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> I got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I opened it, and the first sentence read, "Dear Mr. K. Dilkington, you're one of our most valuable customers." I put it in the bin. Like Descartes. Watched a program on him the other day. He is the one who said something like, I know I'm about because I dream. Doesn't work for everything because ants don't sleep. <laughs> Question from uh, Jade. Carl, what would you change if you were in charge of what kids are taught in school? Right, you know, because I mean your school experience was a bit iffy. You got very bored, didn't you? You got very disillusioned by school. Yeah. What I'd do, right? is, uh, instead of keep sort of teaching kids about two and two and that, which is four, right? <laughs> well done. Um, Show off. <laughs> um, I think they should be asked more questions that make them think rather than something that has just got an answer. I totally agree. I totally agree. Right? So, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, so teaching them the, 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 the quest for knowledge 
uh, inflaming their imagination. But just freaking them out of it as well, just going like... <laughs> See, I knew that's where it was going. Because <laughs> yeah. as soon as you started talking, Rick, I was thinking you're thinking some of the big existential or philosophical questions. You yeah. Know, what does it mean to be human? What does it mean to interact with other exactly. humans? To be a human. Or, or, or teaching them sort of like philosophy on a basic level that, you know, teaching them the love for learning. So, yeah. you know, get them up to a roots level so they want to learn and then they will learn as opposed to just teaching them facts. Whereas... He, he was thinking, <laughs> freak them out of it. <laughs> yeah. No, just like, you know, like I read the other day um, and someone sent it in on email, like, how there's a, a, a dishwasher that's been found on Mars. Rubbish. Whoa, what? Right? That's not true. So, so tell them that. But it's say, not true. Go home and write about it. How did that happen? But it didn't happen. The, well, it did happen. It was in a science magazine. No, it didn't happen. There's not in, a dishwasher a on Mars. Why not? Because... Tell me why not. Why did it... How did it get there? But we're always sending, like, rubbish out there and that. It's like... Not dishwashers. What, you think the, the council take it away and they go, where can we put it? Well, the, uh, the tip's full. We, well, where's the nearest thing we can dump this? Mars, I imagine. No, but the same way that fella who, I don't know, was it two Christmases ago when he was messing about saying I can get stuff to Mars and all that, um, he did it wrong because he did it on, like, Boxing Day and I just think nobody's concentrating. No one wants to work on that day. It's kind of like, do you know what I mean? They're going to do stuff sort of half arsed aren't they, sure. on Boxing yeah. Day? So... It didn't really get there, I don't think, but it crash-landed. What right? are you talking about? What was he trying to do? He was sending something up to Mars. Yeah, that little, that little fella that wanted to get something on Mars, and it, it, it got... Probe, you mean? And it didn't open properly. Yeah. It got there, didn't open but, but the thing is, it got there, it didn't open properly. No-one's been back to pick it up. And what I'm saying yeah. is, we're saying about going to Mars as our next planet, it's a tip. There's loads of stuff that's been no. flirted up there. No, it's not. <laughs> it has, because it's, about... it's just all, like, that probe thing is still there, rotting away. Yeah. So... Ipso facto, there is a dishwasher on Mars. We've yeah. settled that. Why would they have a dishwasher on Mars? Would they take the dishwasher up in the space shuttle in case they had dinner parties? What are you talking about? I just think they would have a little dishwasher in there. There's a lot of them. Tight space. You don't want to... But who's going to do that? You know, that means... Do you know how much fuel it takes to move a kilogram... Yeah. ...out of the Earth's atmosphere? So they're going to take up a dishwasher, are they? Sorry, but what are they cooking up there, Carl? How many people does it take to fly a rocket? I... <laughs> how many people? Tell me how many people. Uh, well, it's either one monkey with a banana shoe that feeds it, or probably two or three humans. Right. Say it's three humans. Yeah. Now, there's three humans because they need one to steer it. So one, to, one, one to stop at the petrol station no, to get what, more. Yeah. What I'm saying is, if you're going to start having a sink, then whoever's they washing They have got up, a sink. I know, because they've got a dishwasher. <laughs> He's got you there. But anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to go into that, but all I'm saying is teach kids things about... Say to them, right, when you go home tonight, there was dinosaurs nothing that ages ago. How would you have lived with them? Get on with it. See you later. Well, they didn't. I've told you this before. You, you got a lot of your information from the Flintstones and One Million Years BC with Raquel Welsh. There weren't dinosaurs knocking around where there were little fellas knocking around in furry pants. No. Question from Kevin. He says, Carl, other than the famous boxing match that you've often talked about, I know that took um, up about 20 minutes of your time, have you ever been in any other kind of fight? Uh, I don't suppose a, a slanging match. I think they're talking of everybody in a physical fight. Um, once that I can remember, it was over a over a woman, <laughs> well, a girl. <laughs> I was at school. Yeah. Um, and it was because like it's hassle, isn't it? Right, relationships when you're younger. How you're old not, were you? Um, about seven. <laughs> <laughs> it was over a woman. <laughs> <laughs> go on then. Yeah, go on. And there was this girl knocking about who, you know, she was, she was quite good looking, everybody liked. And, uh, my mate, he really liked her. And, uh, I, I didn't sort of ask her out on that, but she just sort of took a shine to me and stuff, right? And, uh, didn't really go out with her properly. It's at, at that age where going out with someone is just like sort of going, all right, in the morning, do you know what I mean? You just sort of <laughs> nod your head. Yeah. And that. Anyway, there was some sort of school disco. <laughs> and, um... They were playing Spin the Bottle or something, right? And uh, I sort of wandered over to see what was going on. And I stood on this girl's dress and put a hole in it. And she started crying. I was like, oh, I can't be doing with this, right? Uh, you know, what's up with you? It's old, what's up with you? And everyone's going, Carl, what are you doing? That's meant to be your girlfriend and that. You should be sort of saying, oh, I'm sorry, and giving her a hug and all that. And saying, it'll be all right, we'll sort the dress out. I said, oh, I can't be doing with this. No. Right. So she's crying her eyes out, I said, it's over, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's over. You saying right. in the morning? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no yeah. more of that. Yeah, there's no more right. in the morning. So I go to the toilet, right, and uh, this lad who fancies her comes in and goes, "You're out of order," you know. I'm saying, "What are you on about?" So you, there's two seven-year-olds. Seven yeah. You're out of order. Keep out. Yeah. <laughs> Cut it out. Show her a bit of bloody respect. <laughs> Sorry, were you wearing trilbies? 
Yeah. <laughs> he put his cigarette out in the sink and he just said, leave it. <laughs> Get out of my face. <laughs> So oh. I just thought, I said, look, why are you getting involved? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. you two <laughs> yeah. Why are you getting involved? And, oh, uh, and, it, and it was obviously, like, because, you know, he, he fancied her and that. We yeah. had a bit of a fight in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I accidentally, you know, sort of chipped his tooth on a sink. Oh, wow, is it like a proper... Sorry, this is like someone from Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels. Yeah. What are you talking about two seven-year-olds in a toilet? <laughs> so you put, you put a hole in her dress. I don't know how that... What I were you wearing? Know, football boots? I just stood boots? on it. Just... <laughs> <laughs> how did you make a hole in her dress? I don't know, it was like that, that sort of material. You were like, wearing winkle pickers. Like <laughs> crepe, you know what I mean? It was like a crepe dress or something. Yeah. Right. And that so got a hole in it. But, so, so you're having a, and when you say you're having a fight, I mean, are you wrestling with it? You got head, sort of arm locks a and head bit locks? Of wrestling and sho shoving about and that. And it was an accident. I didn't sort of go right. I'm going to break your teeth or anything. It's just yeah. that I happened to push his head down, and and his tooth hit the sink, yeah. right? And it chipped and yeah. what have you. After that, like I, I sort of left there and stuff, and we had to go into assembly, uh, and there was a copper in there doing some presentation, saying, "Listen, kids, you know, don't get into trouble, because we're out there and we'll get you." Right, so sort of try to teach the kids young not to get into any trouble and stuff. So I'm sat in the assembly room thinking, oh god, there's a copper here talking, and it, like, my mate's gonna come in in a minute, like, with a chipped tooth and everything. And, and questions that, are gonna get asked. That's what kind of happened. I mean, the, the coppers didn't get involved. Yeah. But did you turn your back on violence after that then? Yeah. Uh, well, well, he, he said you'll never take me alive, copper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, that, that was the sort of last fight. Brilliant. What I mean is, we've we've obviously interfered somewhere along the way, and well, we, we have done. interfered. Yeah, yeah, we shouldn't have done because it's, mm. it's the same way. Like, uh, if we, you know, if we didn't have planes and that, would we have wings now? If we'd have no. needed to get about, <laughs> no. would we have had wings? No, the answer is no. <laughs> Next, no, but but you say that, but look at the way he's right. Is it because he's right? No, but all I'm saying is, you see that little picture of like an ape to man. Yeah. At first, they're crawling about on all fours because probably yeah. you're looking for food, so you want to be down there. So right. if, you, if you're on both legs, yeah. you're missing stuff that's on the floor. What sort of time period do you think this... Because, I mean, we started, uh, you know, dabbling with a plane maybe 100 years ago. So what sort of time period do you think this little thing who's scrabbling around looking for food I stood up and I walked? don't know. I, I sort of don't worry about time. Sort right. Of behind, well, I'll tell you now, we wouldn't have wings now. If the Wright brothers had said, oh, forget it, we wouldn't have wings now. Well, it's that time again. Uh... It's the feature that the world is saying could rival Monkey News one day. Ready? Oh, what's he written today? <laughs> well, Carl's diary. You didn't actually yeah. explain what it was. On the tube on the way back home, saw an advert for a book about a woman who works in a funeral home. She went into work one day, uh, she goes to work on a body, she takes the sheet off of one of the bodies, and it looks exactly like her. This is called a doppelganger. The what's thing a doppelganger to you? It's the thing I read about them ages ago where um, someone was uh, walking down the street. Yeah, and he sees someone who looked a bit like him. And no, this was weirder than that. Go um, on. Um, he, he, he remembers like going down that street as a kid on his bike whistling. Yeah. And then he sort of is walking down the street, going to get some milk or whatever from the shop. Little bike comes whizzing past. He hears the whistling. He goes, "That's weird." Looks at it. It was him when he was a kid. <laughs> So Don't it's like a time <laughs> shit. What do you mean it was him as a kid? This this is like a different form of doppelganger. It's just uh um, well, it's impossible, it's rubbish. Some sort of time thing, isn't it? No, no, it's, it's not that's impossible. So <laughs> it's like a time thing, Rick. No, no, no. Yeah, it's something you read thing. again on the internet, or it was a short story, or something someone told you. Mm. On my walk back from the tube, I saw a jogger who was pushing a pram at the same time. The kid looked terrified. <laughs> 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 Got my science book out. It said that the static you get on the telly when a channel isn't tuned in properly is radiation that is still knocking about from when the Big Bang happened. I thought about the Big Bang and wondered if it was really a Big Bang or did it just sound louder as there was no other noise to drown it out. <laughs> Good point, though, isn't it? Carl's diary, Rick, never ceases to amaze. We do, of course, Rick, every week get thousands of emails. I mean, it's Freddie from Winchester says, uh, of course, it was recently Valentine's Day. What's the most romantic thing that you've done for Suzanne, Carl, that you can think of? Uh, I, I don't really do all that. Sure. Uh, the Valentine's Day stuff. It's just, the problem is, if you do it once, they expect it every year. Yeah. 
Sure. That's that's the problem with Christmas and stuff, isn't it? It's like it's become that's what you do now every <laughs> year. Every day, yeah. So yeah. I prefer to just sort of wait. You know what I mean? And and you know, if I think of an idea or I know of something that she wants, I might get her something, but I might not do it on Valentine's Day. It's that thing. It's like how I've, I've said about Pancake Tuesday. <laughs> Make it Pancake Wednesday. Have it when you want. Why yeah. am I waiting? Why am I waiting for someone to tell me when I can have a pancake? I'll have it today if I want one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's Pancake Tuesday. No, I won't bother. I'll have trifle. So, <laughs> so it's the same same with this. You know, with Suzanne. Um, luckily, right? I mean, Valentine's Day and what have you. She was uh, she was ill. Luckily. So we didn't we didn't have to go out. So I'd say, is he asking for advice? Well, I suppose yeah. Certainly, you may as well give it. Treat them when they deserve it. <laughs> I remember uh, once when Suzanne was ill, she had a fever, but there was no food in the house. What did you suggest to her? She was too ill. Well, to it cook. was it was when we were still living in Manchester and that, and uh, you know uh, we needed to get some food in for tea and stuff. And uh, I said, "Come on, come to the supermarket." She was like, "No, I'm ill. You go." And I ate buying food. I just sort of get a bit blank when I'm looking at it. There's too much, isn't there? That's the problem. You go down all these aisles, and there's just too much. So anyway, I said, no, come on, come with me. She was like, oh, but I've got this fever, I'm hot and everything. So I said, well, come to the supermarket, you go on the frozen aisle, cool yourself down. <laughs> <laughs> and she did, and she said, you know, it made it worse, she was ill for another three days. Lawrence from New York says, I was wondering how Mr K Dilkington would interpret this famous saying of philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein. The quote is, if a lion could talk, we could not understand him. Even if he's English. Yeah, if he, <laughs> yeah, if a lion could speak English, so there's no language barrier. He's speaking English words and using all the correct uh, grammar and everything, but you wouldn't be able to understand what he was saying. Why? Because it is from a different world. His frames of reference would be so bizarre that you wouldn't be able to get a grasp on what he was talking about because you'd have so little in common, even if he used real words. No, but he's talking English. Yeah, no, but his reference points would be just so far removed. You know, they're removed slightly when, uh, uh, if you saw two people talking about Kierkegaard, you'd, un you'd, you'd... I hear... won't understand that. Exactly. So remove that a billion times to a different species with different input. No, but it depends. If I'm talking to a lion in London Zoo... Yeah. He'll, he'll be saying, oh, I'm fed up with being stuck in here. I'll go, yeah. It's like that, it depends what his background <laughs> is. I mean, there's some people who might have lived down the road from me, but have a totally different life. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter that it's a lion, does it? Well, yeah, because they're just trying to remove it even more. So, so now it's not just a bloke who lived a few doors away. Now it's not even a bloke. Now it's not even... Yeah, but I'd, I'd pick something smaller yeah, or, right. or something, you know, a worm without a mouth. I'd go, definitely not. What? Definitely, Definitely not, not what? I wouldn't be having a chat with it. I just, I just think that a worm that's that's underground. Yeah. What's it got to offer me? <laughs> it's, it's blind and it hasn't got a mouth. It's not going to be a good day out with it. Is what I'm saying. It's not going to have that much to say to me, even if it's English. Right? Yeah, even if it's English. And how can you tell if a worm is English? Is it wear a very tiny bowler hat? <laughs> oh Christ! But do you understand? What about a jellyfish? No, I, you see, I think that's where you, you can you can say you wouldn't be able to have a good chat with them. Because, to me, the sea might as well be another world. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, in a way, I, I think the fish sort of have more rights than us. What do you mean? Just because when when whoever made the world, right, yeah. say, you know, we were just bigging up God, but if yeah. I was, was to have a go at him, yeah. I'd say, you added too much water. <laughs> Criticism one to God, right? right. So, <laughs> you, how would you have changed that? Just, just more land. Fair enough. Now, why, why, are the, why have fish got more rights than us? That because, was what I was because, just because there's loads of them, and when you look at the amount of sea on the world, right? There's, there's loads of that. You only have to like, like you know, I was in Malaga the other week, right? And you know, you look in the sea, there's loads of different fish, uh, and that's just in like eight foot water. If you go miles out. There's like all sorts of weird fish, isn't there, with like lights on them and everything. So, and they're just millions of different types. Yeah. Yeah. Now... But why does that mean they've got more rights than us? Just because I think, you know, rights come in, in numbers, don't they? If you know what I mean. Like, if there's one of you shouting, people go, oh, he's an idiot, shut up, whatever. If there's loads of you shouting, they go, oh, best listen to them, see what they've got to say. Right. And, and that's what I mean about fish. <laughs> yeah. There's loads of fish. Right. 
So... But they're not really making their voices heard, though, are they, Con? Yeah. I know, because they're underwater. <laughs> but, what, but what I mean is... I don't know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do, right, if you had to go back and you were in a... Um, you were had to go and put your mind in, like, the, um, an unhatched uh, egg of something. Like, maybe one of those... E like, uh, that a wasp was injected in a spider. So you know you're in an egg, right, which is really uncomfortable, in a spider. How would you feel about that, Carl? You're a baby wasp in the abdomen of a spider. And I know everything that I know now. I'm, I'm sat in there. Yeah. And now I'm now I'm in a spider as a bait as an unborn wasp. What the fuck am I doing here? What's going on? I don't know what I'll do there. Uh probably try and sleep. <laughs> There's nothing else to do though, is there? I just pray to God it never happens. Learned some famous quotes to see if they are as good as my sayings. Number one, treat every day as if it's your last. Very famous saying. Now, is that something you do, Carl? Um, but you know, my me, me problem with that one is that if it was your last, you wouldn't want to be doing much. That's that's the only problem I've got with that. I wouldn't want to, you know, go to a fairground or whatever because you're going, oh, it's my last day, what am I going to do? And I think you'd spend so much time worrying about what you're going to do that you'd end up staying in. I think you're right. Um, you've taken some of the poetry out of it. I think it means live life to the fullest, right? I like the fact that you were amusing on the idea that if it was your last day, you'd go to the fair. <laughs> 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 it's getting such a 19th century way of spending your final day. I know, yeah. yeah. Um, well, the thing is, the, the other thing is that, um, the only thing that people get depressed about in terms of sort of like, um, you know, life and death is, uh, not the knowledge that they're gonna die, but more the knowledge that they know they're going to die when they're dying. If someone told you, um, no one ever knows when they're going to die, no one ever gets an illness, no one ever gets hit by a truck, everyone passes away peacefully in their sleep, dreaming they're riding a big marshmallow, right? Then you wouldn't care about anything. It wouldn't matter when, it wouldn't matter if you died tomorrow or in 30 years' time. You'd just live life to the full. You'd come, you'd, you'd have it, every day would be great. You'd go out, you'd come back, you'd fall asleep. That would be amazing. There'd be no stress. There'd be no. There'd be no angsty. Oh, we're all going to die. Stress because it wouldn't matter. Because it would just be your life. Wouldn't it be amazing if someone guaranteed you, Carl, you're going to die in your sleep? I'm not going to tell you when. Yeah, but you're... some people do, don't they? Well, exactly. Yeah, but I we know never know that. we're going to because we we stress. What if we get a dreadful illness? What if we, you know? But know but we're almost not letting people die naturally anymore, are we? Because we're always bodging stuff up. What do you mean? Well, someone who might naturally die in the sleep aren't allowed to naturally die in the sleep because they wake them up with those electric things and get them going again and pop in a new lung or whatever whilst they're at it. That's what I'm saying. They don't just... You never hear it anymore, do you? Frank peacefully died in his sleep. No, he died on the operating table whilst we were putting in a new lung. They never... They don't die naturally anymore. <laughs> Frank died... Peacefully with 40,000 volts going through them and a couple of people going, Clear! <laughs> Clear! <laughs> me dad and me talked about history. I said we shouldn't go on about things that happened ages ago because I bet something similar has happened more recently. Brilliant. <laughs> Read about an island in the Indian Ocean where there are tribesmen still living like they're cavemen. A helicopter tried to land and the tribesmen chucked spears at them. This is what I meant about not having to talk about things that happened ages ago. We have got new cavemen now, so why do we talk about the old ones? People could have lived before, but computers and all that blew up and books got burnt, so all they had left was what these tribesmen have got left. Ramblings <laughs> of, <laughs> of a ramblings man. Of a maniac. That I mean, that's it. just a few hours before you go crazy with a gun in there. No, but what, what I mean there is, right? Mm. Say if all this has happened before, something happens. Again, a lot of your information from the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> World ends, mm. right? We come back again somehow. Yeah. It's the detail <laughs> you leave yeah. out that makes yeah. you intriguing. Just like the watch that you can wear that uh, tells you when you're going to die. How does it work? Pop it on your wrist. That's yeah. all the detail you need. So the world happened, no. we came back, we... Um, yeah. Have you seen the pictures? <laughs> 
forget it, and if you don't get it. It's interesting that you had all those profound thoughts about this this period in the past <laughs> when they all lived, but you still <laughs> still found it uh, appropriate to include at the end of that. It says the tribesmen wave their knobs about when they've had enough of having visitors. That's what's what it said in the paper. That's what happens. They're quite happy. What paper is this that you're reading? It was it was in it was in like a paper a couple of days ago. It said um, they don't mind having visitors if they're bringing them coconuts and stuff that they can eat. Once they've got everything they need, they start waving the tackle about, and that means like right, leave now. Which you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, at a dinner party. Uh, my grandfather used to do that. <laughs> I was in there the other day, and uh, like, like I say, little bird noises and that, and a little robin was there, and I thought that's odd. That's out early, right? Because it's like sort of summertime and that. Sure. And then I thought, oh, that's nice. And I was watching it, and then it got like a little worm, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, put it down, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, whoa! What do you mean? Because Why are you interfering? I'd... Why were you interfering in nature with a with a robin taking a worm? Just because it it, it was a nice sunny day and that, and I thought. You see, worms normally come out when it's raining, don't they? And you go, well, I bet they're happy to die, in a way, because it's chucking it down, it's miserable. They come to the top of the soil then, don't they? Yeah. When it's miserable. But it was a sunny day. That's they don't drown, I assume. No, it's not that, is it? It's just that they, they hear the water or something falling on the ground and they go up to see what's happening. <laughs> what? No, no, wait, but why do they come up when they think it's raining? You're a worm, OK? It starts raining. Tell me your thought process. Well, you just kind of... You're down there, you can't see anything, it's dark anyway. Yeah. So, the, the rain's coming down on the land, the worm goes, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> the worm goes, what's going on? He wiggles up to the top. So what does he do? So it, so it, it goes up and it, it sort of sees it's raining, and then it goes back down again, doesn't it? But that's, that's what I'm saying about... The what do you mean? What do you... What is... Sorry... What is this world where he goes, oh, it's just rain again? Oh, so that's, that's the 400th time I've been caught out this year. It's rain. I'll remember next time. I won't come up. I, 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 what do you think a, a worm is capable of in terms of cognitive thought? What do you mean? Well, a worm can basically uh, uh, tell certain chemicals and certain light patterns. That's, a, that's all it is, really. Yeah, and... and it's and not thinking. It's not choosing its favourite food. You don't know that, though. Is what I'm saying. You don't know what things are thinking. Everything thinks. No, it, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, the thinking. There's something in this room that's not. All right. What about <laughs> this one then? What about um, what about flowers? Do you think they've got a a mind, a, a feeling? Because here's here's something that again they they use phototropism. They go towards the sun. They 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 close and All right, open. Well, Can they you stop grow. using long words, Rick? Like sun. Listen. <laughs> but what I was saying is about the worm. This robin that I saw that was eating the worm. It had hold of it, and I thought it said sunny day and that. Give the worm a break, sort of thing. So I went, oh, yeah, yeah, like that. And it sort of dropped it in shock. But then when it realised I wasn't that near it, it picked it up again and swallowed it. And I just thought, oh. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what you mean, no. I just thought it's a sunny day and everything. Normally, birds are nice noises that I like. And yet, there it is going about wrecking lives. <laughs> wrecking lives! It was a no, worm! It just, no, but it just swallowed it really quickly in that. And I thought, I just thought, there's the worm. It, it came out, it was happy, didn't know what was going on. And the, it had an extra chance, the, the robin dropped it. And then it got it again and ate it, and I just, just made me a bit fed up. Well, do you know why, don't you? You couldn't outwit a robin. The worm was going, oh, God, Carl Pilkington. So that, that's who's been sent to save me, is it, God? You've sent Carl Pilkington, oh, I'm dead. That's it, OK, eat me. What sound or noise do you hate? Um, as me or as a as a worm? I don't know what you mean. What do you mean? Why would, I, why would we be asking a worm? I've never heard an actor say that to James Lipton when he says, "Um, what noise do you hate? What is me or a worm?" No, wow. but all I'm saying is because of my last question. That's what I was saying. A bird noise is relaxing to me. Right. Well, it's not anymore because I think of all the deaths and stuff that, that go around that. <laughs> so now you hate the sound of birds. <laughs> I'm just saying it's changed my view on it. It's so like it's like anything, isn't it? Every every noise can mean a disaster. Can it? Why would the sound of laughter, people laughing, why would that suddenly cause, why would that also signify disaster? If you wake up in the night by the sound of, like, a baby laughing. <laughs> a baby laughing! No, if I had a, ba if I had a baby, right, yeah. and Suzanne was out, she'd work nights or something, <laughs> yeah. and I'd nodded off, I'd put the baby to sleep, Yeah. and then it's three in the morning and I'm woken up by the sound of a baby <laughs> laughing, that would terrify me. <laughs> 
baby's sitting up in a chair like Chucky, going. <laughs> well, no, the... <laughs> <laughs> I think the baby's reading his diary. <laughs> Thinking, oh Christ, this is my father. <laughs> I just hope I'm adopted. Oh God, a baby laughing. So I went, went and had it and stuff. But you had to, before you sort of said, right, I want this doctor. They give you loads of forms to fill out, right? And um, one of the things they did was, uh, if you die, <laughs> what do you want to give away, right? Like a donor. Mm. And what have you? And I thought I was—I really thought about it for a forty minutes or so. I didn't just rush into it. I was sat there thinking, you know, if I'm dead, does it matter and stuff? But I was really concerned when it said about the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Why? What do you mean? What? Because can they have your eyes after you die? It was. It was. I think it was fourth on the list. Why do you care about uh, uh, giving your eyes away just, when just, you're dead? Just because of that thing of you know we don't know for sure yet. I know that you poo poo it, but the afterlife thing. So why in an afterlife do, do you, would you want your eyes more than your liver and your kidneys and your lungs and your heart? Because ghosts don't eat, do they? So you don't need all your liver and your kidneys and stuff, because they're only there to sort your food out. But your eyes, if you're a ghost, I don't want to be a blind ghost. <laughs> because you're around forever then, aren't you? Once you're a ghost, that's it. So the idea of being blind when you're alive, you go, well, all right, then maybe... In the afterlife, I might be treated to a pair of eyes. But the fact of wandering about, dead for years, bumping into stuff... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Oh, it's amazing! So, oh, that's an amazing image! So I didn't tick that box. <laughs> but, but, but why... I don't understand. In your theory of the afterlife, why is it that you, you ghost... You, this ghostly car, why can he survive without a heart, but he can't survive without eyes? What, why... Do you see what I mean? Surely if you're this ghostly apparition, you can just see everything and you can do everything. You don't need no, because, the, the body no, because, because you're a ghost. Think, yeah, I know, but I think it, when you're a ghost, say like how they've seen ghosts in... Um... Right, could I just say now for any listeners, um, this is not the thoughts and beliefs of the management. There is no such thing as ghosts. I do not believe in ghosts. I do not believe in ESP or any mumbo-jumbo. Carry on, Carl. So when there's a ghost, yeah. When, when, you know, when they see ghosts in, like, old castles and stuff. Mm. Yeah. They've had their head cut off because they've been up to no good, right, years ago. But they're carrying it around normally under their arm. That's what I'm saying. It hasn't reattached itself. So if you take the eyes out... But, Carl, how is this ghostly creature able to function? It's, it doesn't have its head on anyway. It's carrying it under its arm. So the suspicion is it doesn't need its head. No, it, it does. It just happens it... to be carrying it around because it, no, it you know, wants to keep it with it. The ghost it... is always in the last condition that it was in when it was in... Oh, what, who makes it... these rolls? The way you are in your last bit of life is how you are as a ghost forever, even in the fashion. Like I say, the ghosts that you see never wear modern clothes, so they, it's always the Victorian stuff. <laughs> now, God. if they could change it, they would, but they can't because they're stuck with it, so that's why. Why did you see cavemen eyes. ghosts? When did ghosts start? They didn't kick in till about 1830, did they? What if you die when you're having a rectal examination? Are you always bent forward with the trousers around your ankles and someone's finger up your ass? But why would you die when you're having that done? That's why I'm not having it done, if that's... You're no, 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 but you, uh, uh, you might have both been suddenly, um, killed in a, in a terrible disaster. Yeah, a meteorite hit you. That's when you get the moaning ghosts, isn't it? That's the other ones who aren't happy. So you're going round, bent forward, going, you've got oh. a doctor's finger up your ass, yeah. and what are you doing? You're sort of going, oh... And that's when you have to get the vicar round. <laughs> what do you mean? Because <laughs> they, they have to put you to, to rest and what have you, don't they? And what does a vicar do when he's going... Are you go so, I, so I get the vicar round, it's years later, it's a hundred years later, you're, 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 you're around this doctor's surgery and there's people coming and the doctor there, the new doctor there, and it's, it's 2073, and they, they go, Vicar, Vicar, they go, Vicar, there's a, there's a, a strange ghost apparition, it's, it looks like an old doctor, right, and he's got his fingers up this sort of like little, it's like a chimpanzee but with a shaved head. No, no, but the doctor wouldn't be, are you saying the doctor dies as yeah, well? Yeah, they both, yeah, you both yeah, die. You die at the same time with his finger up your ass, and so you're forever, you're forever having a little rectal examination with your little trousers around your ankles. Well, that's when it'd be best not to have your eyes. <laughs> Thirteen is your teenager then, aren't you? Life got tough. Yeah, how did it get tough? Just straight away when I was thirteen, my mum was like, you know, oh, it's your thirteenth birthday, you're a teenager now. Right. And she gave us a quid to go and get a cake to celebrate it. <laughs> Went to the supermarket, got a cake, and I just thought, I don't like the look of this. Don't like the look of the way the future is here. <laughs> 
<laughs> on his 13th birthday. <laughs> well, you were buying a cake. What, what did you what see at the supermarket? Just, that... It was kind of like, I don't know, I suddenly felt grown up. I didn't like it. But I think you were always about 58, really, with your outlook. Well, yeah, my mum always said I was old. She said I was an old baby. She said I could frown before I could walk. <laughs> so they always had a bit of a worried look on my face. <laughs> didn't say much, just always listened. My eyes moved about more than I did. Just sat there looking around, looking stressed. Uh, <laughs> my eyes moved about more than I did. <laughs> oh dear, I couldn't walk. Well, I can't walk, but I'll try and get a bit of movement in my face. Mm, um, it's a yeah. workout, a baby workout. Oh, babies, well, if you can't walk, what about your face? Let your face do the walking. It sounds like uh, that horror film. It sounds like Pilkington's baby. <laughs> yeah. Just you lying there in your cot. I didn't like all the stuff that's set up for you. Like, me, me mum tried to send me to, um, like, a nursery. I said, no, I'm not having this. <laughs> Just like that. I said, I said when, I'm older, when I'm older and I've got to go, I'll go, but let's leave out this bit. And she said, all right. She was... <laughs> I love that he could reason with her. I love him. He's like, he's three years old with a pipe. She's going, you go to the nurse, she goes, I, I think not, Mum. <laughs> I mean, kids don't play out, do they? Kids, you know, parents are scared to let the kids play out, and that's why the streets are dangerous now, because no one's playing out on the streets. Whereas when I was a kid, everyone was out on the streets, the streets were safer, because there was more people knocking about. Right. Let the kids play out. It must be like a constant, like a Larry painting, his front garden, do you know what I mean? <laughs> just <laughs> loads of people just walking around. There was never around. any problems. I was sort of taken away by some fella. <laughs> what? Who, uh, what? Whoa, 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 no, whoa. no, I was in, I was playing about in the garden. Yeah. But my dad's mate, Tony, yeah. he did tiling with him. He drove past and he saw me looking a bit fed up, so he just leant over, picked me up, took me to the pub. Now, the thing is, there wasn't panic. People weren't going, oh, God, where's Carl gone? He's out. Just, just... How old were you? He's down the pub. <laughs> yeah, he's, four, he's four years old, yeah. <laughs> well, he's only having a He's down the pub with Tony, probably, playing darts. <laughs> Yeah, I was about three or four. Sorry, so some bloke drives by who happens to be a friend of your dad's, thinks that baby looks grumpy. Yeah. I'm taking him down but to the that's, pub. that's what it Tony, was like. Tony, you bringing a baby to the pub? Uh, yeah, I might do, yeah, we'll bring in ours. <laughs> All right, see you later, mate. Well, that's what I'm saying, whereas now they go, the baby's gone, there's a big full-on panic going yeah, on. Yeah, but I think it says more about your parents that they didn't do that. They looked out of the van car <laughs> and you were gone. Some bloke's driving off in a van. And they're just going, oh, well, they drove down the pub. Uh, Doesn't Princess Diana look lovely? <laughs> This is absurd. So what happened when you got down the pub? I just was there for a bit, and then, uh, the For every bit? Just had a game of pool? Then my dad came in. He was like, oh, there you are. Yeah. Oh, there you are! I love that! Oh, where's my baby? Going to I'm just gonna have a quick pint now. <laughs> oh, there you are. <laughs> Alright, mate. So, uh, yeah, I think things were better back then. I met up with my mate Laurie. He said he was in a pub at the weekend and saw a bloke whose hands were on the wrong arms. <laughs> Well, he had, his, he had his left hand on his right arm and the right hand on the left arm. I don't think this would be a problem if he's been like that from an early age. When I was in Ripley's in LA, I saw a bloke whose head was on back to front. That's more annoying, isn't it, than your hands? <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? Now then, would you walk, how would you walk? Would you be walking backwards, Carl, so that you could walk, so you're basically walking forwards? I reckon or, I'd walk would... sideways so nobody would sort of tell the difference. It just looked like... <laughs> Got home and read the magazine. There was a story about a baby that was born that looked like a frog. <laughs> what magazine's this? Uh, that made the news. That that was in oh. a proper newspaper in the end. It didn't really have a neck or top half of its head. It would look all right if it always wore a scarf and a hat. <laughs> the world would be a more interesting place if there were loads of different types of humans like there are creatures. Then some people would be good at certain jobs. Spider people, ant people, builders, cockroach people, dustbin men. <laughs> Good idea, isn't it? I mean, I, I, Cockroach I mean, men, spider men, what are you talking about? Look at some insects, right? Yeah. They don't have machinery. Yet they're getting by, aren't they? They, they? they have their lives like we do. They get up, they wander about, they collect food, they tidy up, they fix stuff, they make their own house. We can't do any of that. So what I'm saying is, why aren't we using them? Why are these cockroaches with all these powers and stuff Powers going about. So these powers. But how could we use them? How could we harness them? I just them? told you, dustbin men, or or whatever. That's no, what you mean. said if they were also men, if they were cockroach men, we where's could the use where's them. The, you've left a big bit out? But when that one inch cockroach becomes a six foot bloke w wearing a, a jacket, it's just that we always use insects for like a bit of fun. You, you see flea circuses and all that, which is all very well, but I don't think it's getting the most out of them. 
Woke up at 9.55 a.m. Soon as I woke up, I looked at Suzanne and she looked at me. I said, did I tell you about the immune system? <laughs> Suzanne started laughing. I said, it's amazing. She said, not now. <laughs> oh, oh, God. I was thinking that. He's swinging that. into action. He zips up his eyes are like... <laughs> Did I tell you about the immune system? Oh, shut up. I'll put the kettle on. Oh, God. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> okay, then. This is the Carl Pilkington Top 5 Freaks in a number five. Um... Probably, uh, something not too good at number five, but it's still interesting. Lighthouse Man. Who's that? What's Lighthouse Light Man? What's Lighthouse Man? It's a fellow with a hole in his head. <laughs> and he, uh, what he does, rather than moan about it, sticks a candle in it. Shut up. What are you talking about? Sticks a candle what in it. What are you talking about? Where is the I hole? I bet he didn't call himself Lighthouse Man, did he? Well, I don't know. It's just what, what he, 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 he got nicknames. Because he had this hole. Doctors were like, there's nothing we can do. Can't fill it. Thought, what can I do with it? And it was of the days when there was no electric and that. You had to walk about with a candle. <laughs> right. So hang on a minute. Okay, I'm I can have both got a candle holder here. Yeah. Stuck a candle in it. And he just got nicknamed the Lighthouse Man. So again, not I mean, it's not that amazing, but I like the way he, he was sort of energy efficient. Um, so was it his forehead? No, on the very top of his head. That's perfect. You don't want in the forehead, Steve. You'd have to walk back That'd with your neck ridiculous. Crick. So he was like a kind of human jack o' lantern. Yeah. He's a lighthouse man. What did you see? What, Sorry, what, what, what yeah, better I description do you need than the lighthouse man? So, yeah, he's probably at number five. Wow, that's at number five, Steve. Number four. What about Pig Face Woman of Manchester Square? <laughs> God. Again, you're getting what it says in the tin there, aren't you? Right. And it's just this woman who had a face like a pig. <clears throat> and uh, the rumour was yeah. that it wasn't a woman. <laughs> Someone said it was a pet bear and they'd shaved it. <laughs> That's what oh, I, God! That's what was, this someone, was this someone you saw? Or no, no, you just this, is, this is going back. This is, this, years is, this is years and years ago. Yeah. Uh, when there was loads of, like, weird-looking people. I mean, the fact that it's pig face woman of Manchester Square <laughs> yeah. says that there might have been one in... <laughs> Piccadilly Circus? Yeah, yeah, whatever. So there was a lot more of them knocking about back then. Let's assume that um, it was a woman, and the first one, you know, the lighthouse fellow, he's a, he's a human. Do you think people would object because of their disfigurement, deformity, um... A bit like being called freaks, do you think? Well, it, it gave them a purpose back then. See, if you were a freak years ago, it was work for you. You'd have these circus things. Mm. Now, if you've got a funny head, you're on the dole. Uh, number three? What about Elephant Man? Right. Stick him at number three. He's, oh, he's, he's number three. He's, the, he's surely the most famous freak ever to have lived, isn't he? He's the one who got me into it. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, sure, he's sort uh, of entry-level freak. Yeah. Uh, the gateway freak. Everyone, everyone is aware of him. Mm. If the Elephant Man still existed, right, and you got the opportunity to meet him, and you walked in, a couple of questions. One, what would your first reaction be? And two, what would you say to him? What would your first question be? How would I react? Well, I've, I've sort of seen him enough now that it wouldn't shock me. Mm -hmm. So, I don't even think I'd flinch. Okay. Uh, I mean, like I said, when I first saw you, that, <laughs> that was, that was a, a bit weird. Mm. But now, look, I can look at you, I don't double take mm. or anything. Uh, what would I say to him, though? What, what, uh... I'd probably say, where do you get that hat to fit you? <laughs> <laughs> he always had that on. Where do you get that from? <laughs> oh, that sort of flat cap that he's got. Yeah. yeah that <sighs> one, so, yeah, I'd have him. So he's at number three. Right. Uh... Elephant Man, number three. I can't wait for two and one. Right, okay, number two. Well, I know two. what my number one is. It's just number two now. I don't know his name, but there's a fella knocking about... Well, I don't think he's around anymore. But he had, like, a normal body. Looking at him, you'd go, what's up with him? He's not a freak. Takes his undies off. Got two knobs. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. OK. Oh, wait, there's nowhere to start. Do I you think he, he uses them alternately? Like, I have a way out of this one, I have a way out of that one. Or does he just, like, spread the load so he's weeing out of both? I don't think he knows. What do you mean he's sort know? of like a lucky dip. When he goes to a urinal, yeah. he sort of he can have a little bet with himself. He's just like, I don't know what's going to happen here. So he do reckon he holds them holds both them out? Back, definitely. So he takes his trousers down because I mean, you know, he, yeah, he uh, can't use a Y front, right? Uh... Need more like a W front. Yeah. So um, he he pops his pecs down there. I don't think it's that much of a problem. It's not like uh... well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'd prefer that than Elephant Man's head. Well, of course you would. Well, that's what I'm saying. 
What if he had elephant man's knob? Yeah, but he didn't work like that, did it? That's the thing. They said he had the body of an elephant. Well, that's the only thing that wasn't of an elephant standard. <laughs> His knob was normal. Whereas with this fella, it's the other way around. Everything normal. Took the pants off. Oh well, what's going on here? <laughs> But why would you ever take his pants off? No, well, I wouldn't. I'm just saying if- But why- I don't know- I don't know why you'd be in a situation with this man with two knobs standing there with his pants on and you go pop your pants off. You're not a doctor. No, I say if I'm waiting in a- in a cubicle. Yeah. And he's there. For what? Sure, you're I'm waiting, waiting in a cubicle. Have, I'm, waiting have, I'm waiting to have a wee at a cubicle. He's oh, taking two urinals up and right. going, hang on, you don't need them both, do you? He goes, well, actually, oh, and have then a he... look at this. Right. He's got two knobs. See, I- I didn't see him at two urinals. I saw him at one, maybe them pointing inwards. If you had that, and you, and the, say the first time that you met Suzanne, would you mention that straight up? Would you say, right, before this goes any further, I've got something to show you. Well, that's true. Exactly, tell me exactly what you would say. Uh, You had normal head then, didn't you? I had, I had the same head, yeah. Yeah, but it had, like, hair in, coming out of it, didn't it? And sort yeah, of like... yeah, but she also had a, a smaller arse back then <laughs> as well, so I think we've both been dumb. Anyway, we need to get to number one. Yeah, number one. Okay, it is. It's, uh, it's Pillow Man. Oh, yeah. Hello, man. Okay, now explain for those that don't know who he was. He's, uh, he's a fella with, uh, no arms and legs. Mm -hmm. Just a head and a little body. Nickname Pillow Man. Well, why is he your favourite? Just because he's amazing. Just the way, uh, he just got on with his life. He used to light a cig. Just using his, like, his lips and his, his tongue and that. Oh, I've and seen not, this. Not it's fully a... lit. He'd buy, like, roll your own. Yeah, it's, uh, it's in the film Freaks, isn't it? Yeah. And he, he, he had a shave it. as well. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Do you think he, he used to do it, he used to get it in his mouth and I don't know. Jesus. It's amazing. Did he have, did he have a knob? I've got a I think he did, because he had some kids. Word, what? Yeah, he had kids. He was an all right looking fella. He wasn't, he wasn't odd looking. He's just, sorry? He, no, he looked like Samuel L. Jackson. Imagine him with no arms and legs. Right, that's odd though, isn't it? Really? Um, it's weird, but you've got to give it to him, you know, I mean, he's, he's there rolling his own, he's pretty cool looking. I just want to say to people,